guys, welcome to Lingo Marina. Do you know the comment that I get from you all the time? It sounds something like, Marina, I understand English, but I can't speak it. What should I do? So today I am going to give you the action plan. My name is Marina. I was born and raised in Russia and I lived there for 25 years. At the age of 25, I moved to the US. So English is the language that I had to master in order to build my business here. So today I'm going to give you my best tips on how to improve your speaking and how to make speaking English almost automatic in your brain. So it comes naturally and you don't have to hesitate before pronouncing things. By the way, guys, before we proceed, please comment down below who has this problem. You watch movies, you listen to podcasts, but when it comes to speaking, you stumble, you become nervous, you forget all the words. I want to see who has the same problem. Now you comment and we continue. Let's start by drawing a diagram that's going to give you an idea of where to start and how to continue. Imagine this is our language, our English, and we have four levels here. Let's start with level number one. Basically the foundation, it's called the phonetic aspect. Now this is basically how you pronounce words. And I know for a lot of people, there is a lot of psychological stress associated with the way they say things because they have an accent from their native language because somebody laughed at them maybe and they stopped feeling confident about their English. You know, there are several things that could happen to you or for a lot of people, uh, because for example, when I was growing up in Russia and learning English, I remember sitting in the classroom and I just came back from the UK. I took part in an exchange program. Two weeks, I got inspired by the British accent. So I came back to my classroom and everyone was speaking like this. We didn't have any accent. We spoke Russian English. And I started speaking like this with a British accent. So everyone was staring at me. They were like, Marina, what are you doing? Stop showing off. When I talk to a lot of people here in the US, like Indians, I tell them like, hey, this, this is how you could pronounce this word. And they're like, no, no, no. This American pronunciation sounds funny to me. I'm gonna pronounce it my Indian way. I'm like, okay. And I totally understand it because when you're in a community of people who speak with a certain accent, you don't wanna be different. You want to sound just like everyone else. But if you're willing to sound more like native speakers, then the phonetic aspect is the first thing that you should take care of. How you pronounce certain words, certain phrases, and you can do that by watching a lot of videos out here on YouTube, or you could take a course that is called From Intermediate to Advanced, where teachers talk a lot, not only about pronunciation and phonetics, but also about words that you need to improve your level, different grammatical structures that are required to become advanced. I will leave a link below to that course, and it will also give you a special promo code. We have two accredited teachers teaching that course and we also have me motivating you throughout the journey. This is a course where we also help you find a steady buddy, somebody who you can practice your English with. We divide participants into teams depending on their age, interests, where they're from, and what they hope to achieve with English. Each team completes homework, and for every completed homework, you get points. And those points allow you to win prizes like individual English classes, personal coaching, or other courses that you want to take. So the course from intermediate to advanced is not just theory, it's also a lot of practice. So join the course using the link below, and we're gonna continue with our diagram. So phonetic aspect, I'm going to give you a couple techniques that you can use. The shadowing technique means that you are listening to somebody speaking English and you either pause and repeat or you try to repeat after them. I did that a lot um, back in Russia when I was trying to practice my accent. And the second thing you can do is you record yourself because you know what happens as a YouTuber, I record myself a lot. And the thing is, when I speak, I miss some sounds and I don't really notice that. When I listen to the recording of myself, I'm like, oh my God, I mispronounced that word. Oh, that sounded weird. Oh my God, what did I do here? So when you listen to yourself, you notice other things that you could not notice when you were speaking because your brain is obviously busy processing another language that you're speaking right now. So record yourself, listen to yourself. Oh my God, that's gonna help you improve. Just go back to my first videos and watch them. You'll, you'll see, you'll see the difference. Okay, so we have the phonetic aspect here that we just covered. Our second level is vocabulary. Now, ideally, you know, in order to speak English, you need to know 2000 words, but what is better? 
to know 2000 words poorly or to be confident in 500 words? Of course, be confident in 500 words. So that means when you're learning new vocabulary, don't just try to learn 50 words a day, ideally two or three words a day maximum, but try to use them. Try to use them at least three to four times in a sentence. Make sentences with them, make texts with them. Just please make sure that, you know, this passive vocabulary where you have all of the words that, you know, you've heard or you've read, um, you know, and you can understand them, make sure they transfer into your active vocabulary and active vocabulary I made this circle smaller just because yes normally it's smaller uh, you know we don't use all of the words that we know but this is your goal to use as many words as possible and very often this could be like a 2000 mark and here we have like a 500 word mark try to grow this vocabulary by uh, transferring words from your passive into active and how can you do it well we just talked about that so what we're writing here is active vocabulary pay attention to it the second thing learn phrases not just isolated words because sometimes you see you know rid of how do you use it i got rid of unnecessary clothes in my wardrobe you know, you need to learn how you use that phrase in a sentence instead of just learning chunks of it or like at the moment, how do you use it? I am busy at the moment, I can't answer the phone. Okay, that's great. Because sometimes we're like, oh, this is a great word, but how does it all work together? So here's how you learn phrases, not words. Also pay attention to, I call them thinking time phrases because this is also super important. Sometimes we forget words and phrases like, that's a difficult question, let me think about it. Oh, they help me so much on TOEFL, uh, all of the exams that I'm taking, like they buy you time. Or, let me think. Or, I haven't thought about this before. So by adding those phrases, by adding them into your vocabulary, you pronounce them almost automatically, which means you will have additional memory space in your brain to remember the words that you forgot. If you're taking a test like TOEFL or IELTS that has a speaking part in it, this is an absolute must for you. Learn those thinking time phrases. There are other types of phrases that come in handy when you're talking to a native speaker and you don't understand something. Could you repeat this, please? Sorry, I didn't catch it. Can you say that again, please? Know those phrases, pick out two or three that you like and use them all the time. Now, the next level is lexico grammatical. And I'm gonna explain what this means. This is basically how you connect phrases into sentences. And a mistake that a lot of students make here, they're trying to learn all the tenses at the same time, including all of the conditionals. Now, don't do that. Again, it's the same as with your vocabulary. I'd rather you know four tenses and use them correctly instead of you knowing the names of 12 tenses and conditionals and not use them correctly please make sure that you go step by step. Because in a lot of times, I know people jump over levels, like, oh, they were intermediate, but then they went abroad, came back, and suddenly, you know, their speaking is advanced, but their grammar is still intermediate. So make sure you actually take your time and uh, replenish your knowledge in grammar, because I had the same problem with German. I learned German. It was like B1, I think. I went to Germany. I was inspired by the accent, by how they sounded, came back to Russia. My speaking German was C1. My listening German was C1. Uh, my writing German was kind of better, but my grammar was still B1 or like B2. But I still transferred to another level, missing those crucial parts of grammar. Don't do that. Don't follow my example. Uh, be mindful of the time that you need to make sure you're comfortable with all the different grammar structures. And the fourth level, I'm gonna add numbers here. And the fourth level is discourse. Basically your conversations, your monologues and dialogues. And here again, there are so many ways to practice. Topics, right? Your favorite. How do I talk about myself? How do I talk about my age? How do I talk about my goals? How do I talk about my career, my family, etc.? Practice those topics. Speak to yourself. It's very convenient, it's free, and you always have someone who's listening to you. The best advice, right? Then our favorite, record yourself. And talk to ChatGPT, I love that. 
Because you can have all kinds of conversations with ChatGPT. You can have voice conversations. You can have written conversations, any topic. You can ask it to teach you something. You can ask it to tell you a story, uh, the best way to practice. Or you can take a course from intermediate to advanced and practice with real students from all over the world. That was it for me for today, guys. I hope this was useful for you. And uh, I hope this gave you some structure on how to fight your fear of speaking English and how to deal with the problem of being able to understand English, but not being able to speak it. With that being said, please hit the like button if you like this video. Take the course if you'd like to improve and I'll see you very soon on this channel. Bye!